what is going on everyone welcome back to another swift tutorial today we're going to be talking a little more in depth about table view cells so i've definitely made a bunch of videos on table views and i wanted to take some time to dedicate to three particular things about table view cells and those are uh, setting the height of a table view cell updating the table view cells accessory type as well as the accessory view so this will also answer the question that I've gotten from many of you of how to add a check mark to a table view uh, and customize the other look and feel that you can add to your cells so that said smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm if you're new to the channel welcome hit subscribe get Xcode ready get excited let's jump right in quick pause before we get into the video if you haven't seen it already I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. Let's get started by creating a new project. We're going to stick with the single view application and we're going to call this cells, save it to our desktop and let's get into it. So before we can talk about customizing cells, we need to set up a basic table view. So I'm gonna do that here in code. Feel free to do it also uh, with a storyboard and IB outlet. So let's create a table view constant up here. And let's add this as a sub view like so. Let's set the delegate and the data source. Let's make sure we conform to those protocols. And we want to also give this a frame. Let's do that in view did layout sub views. Call super. And let's assign the frame to be view.bounds, which will be the entirety of the view controller's view. And then we also need the two minimum functions for the table view data source. So number of rows, we'll just return 10 and cell for row and we're going to DQ a cell with an identifier of cell for index path. Let's return cell and let's also set the cells text label dot text to hello world. And before we run it, let's also register a cell uh, on our table with this identifier. So to do that, we're going to say table view, table view, register, and we just want to register a basic UI table view cell class. So the cell class dot self for this ID. And let's hit command R to build and run. We should have a very basic table view with 10 cells that say hello world. So give it a second. There we are. Okay, cool. So uh, like I mentioned, we're going to be talking about three main things and they are the accessory type of a cell, the accessory view of a cell. Let's spell that correctly. And the cell height. And we'll see how we do on time. And we'll also throw in images. So first up, accessory type. So this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, the UI table view cell base class has a accessory, accessory, if we could spell it correctly, accessory type property off of it. And you can see it is a UI table view cell dot accessory type. And it's actually an enum. And this basically controls what gets shown on the rightmost of the cell. So if you ever noticed in like the settings app or uh, other first party Apple apps or third party apps, sometimes there's a little arrow here indicating you can click into a cell for a menu 
or there's an info icon or a check mark. Uh, and the check marks, it's something that you guys have asked for quite a bit in the comments. Uh, it's nothing more than an accessory type. And we can basically assign it uh, by using the uh, available cases here. So let's say we start off with check mark. We can hit command R to build and run. And you'll notice we have check marks here for every single cell. So the reason this is useful is you can imagine if you're building a to-do list type app where you want to check a particular cell. Uh, when you tap on a cell, you can have logic that will uh, update the accessory type for that cell, either checking it or unchecking it. So to uncheck it, you you would of course just uh, assign this to nil, I believe. We can nil this out or I believe none. Yeah, that's what we want. So instead of nilling it out, if you want to get rid of it, we can say none. And another popular one, like I mentioned, is disclosure indicator, which is that arrow you see in a lot of apps. So let's do this. Let's say if index path dot row percent two is zero, we're going to show this. Otherwise, we're not. So for all of the even numbered cells, we will show the little arrow to the right, the disclosure indicator, and for the other ones, we do not. So that is basically an accessory type. Uh, moving on, let's take a look at the accessory view. So this one's also pretty similar. So the accessory uh, naming is just to uh, indicate that the thing we're talking about, the type or the view, it's the accessory that shows up on the rightmost of the cell. And similar to the accessory type, the accessory view allows you to add a view, as the name implies, to uh, the accessory aspect of the cell. So let's do an example. So as you see, an accessory view can be a UI view. So the one that's very common that I personally like to use is a switch. So if you've ever seen in the settings app, um, if you want to turn Wi-Fi on or off, it's a switch. That's basically how Apple has this set up. And let's just enable this to be is on true. And if we hit command R, you'll notice that for each even cell or each odd cell rather, we have this switch and we can interact with the switch. So this is what accessory views are super useful for. Now, I'm sure you noticed you can use an accessory view for uh, any type of UI view anything that subclasses UI view. So what we could do is something like this. Now, of course, you can use it for a label. You can use it for a UI view. Uh, in this case, the reason we don't see it is because the uh, UI view we have here needs a frame. So let's give it a quick frame. Hit command R and we'll see our red view here. So the point is the accessory view is very similar to the accessory type. It just allows you to customize it with a view of your own. So that said, moving on to the cell height, this one is actually very interesting and a very broad topic. So what I'm gonna do for the purposes of this video is talk about how we define an explicit height and then also how we use auto layout to calculate uh, the table view cells height dynamically based on the content. So the simplest way that we can demo this to get started on height is uh, by first setting a color for the cell so we can see it a little better. But uh, in actuality, there's a function called height for row. And uh, in here, we can basically return the height we want to show for a given row at a given index path. So if we want every single height to be 100, we can do that in here. And of course, we can also do if else's over uh, the index path to determine how tall the cell will be. So uh, let's do this. For the background color, let's say if index path dot row percent two is zero, we'll show this color. Otherwise, we'll show a different color and in this function, we'll also copy this if statement. And in this case, we'll return 50. Otherwise, we return the 100. So now you'll see that the height 
uh, alternates from the 50 to the 100. So this one's fairly straightforward to understand. The one that's interesting that most people ask about is uh, dynamic height. So something that you'll notice actually with this default table view cell that we have here that we're using, uh, it actually supports dynamic height. So if we take this hello world label and copy and paste it a ton, just to be long enough to roll over onto multiple lines, you'll notice that when we hit command R, the cell doesn't actually change. The cell just kind of uh, truncates the label here. And the reasoning is we need to specify that this text label can have uh, multiple lines. So number of lines, we're gonna say zero, which means infinite. And now you'll see that the uh, cells have adjusted their height to ensure that the entirety of the label can be shown in the cell. So what's going on here under the hood is uh, auto layout is using the intrinsic size of the content of the cell to compute how tall the cell needs to be. So if you want to create a custom cell that has these uh, the property of being dynamically sizable, what you need to do is basically supply the content height within the cell uh, and use constraints to basically specify top and bottom. So the cell will expand or uh, collapse to the size of the inner content. So that is how sizing works. Uh, I would do an example in the storyboard with a custom cell, but sizing is a pretty broad topic like I mentioned, and I don't want this video to get too, too long. Uh, but yeah, that is sizing. And let's quickly talk about images. So images are also very interesting and very heavily uh, discussed and asked about, and I might dedicate a video to this independently. But specifically with images, you can uh, set the uh, default image view on a cell. So we can say cell, image view, image, and let's use a system image of let's say bookmark. And let's see, image, system name, bookmark, value of optional type, image view, this wants us to put a question mark here because this is optional. Hit Command R. Basically, we can set the image on the cell pretty simply by doing this. However, uh, the question that I get most often around images is if you're trying to show an image from the internet, let's say you're downloading it and you want to show it into a cell, uh, what ends up happening for most is when you scroll the cell on screen, the image downloads and it shows. But when you scroll the image off screen, it goes away. And the reasoning is, is the cell is deallocated. When you scroll that cell into view again, your code is going to go and try to fetch the image again. So the solution there is you need to cache the image. And when you have downloaded the image for the first time, now you have it on device. When you scroll the cell away and scroll back, there's no reason to go and fetch the cell again. What you should be doing instead is using the cached version of that image. So that's a very, very quick uh, kind of high level verbal overview of how that image fetch logic should work. And like I said, I'll have a dedicated video on it since I think it's pretty important and it warrants it. And also enough of you have asked, so might as well. So that said, if you haven't hit the like button already, please make sure to do so down below for the YouTube algorithm. Helps me make more videos for all of you. If you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button while you're at it and uh, comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions, errors. Uh, I reply to every single comment within a day or two. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.